In trying to bring about such an explosion, scientists had two recipes, two blueprints to follow. The first call for nuclear fusion. To illustrate, here are four hydrogen atoms. If fused, brought together under proper conditions, they form one helium atom. But a loss of weight occurs during the process. In other words, the parts are heavier than the whole. Why? Because when the fusion takes place, this extra mass or weight is converted to and released as energy. Energy which might be put to some use. The sun has the key to this combination. It is continually converting hydrogen into helium and sending the resulting energy earthward. That's the principle which might make a hydrogen bomb work. But to the scientists who wanted a quick solution, releasing a piece of the sun on Earth for a moment of devastation seemed a bit impractical. In other parts of the world, events occur which give added significance to and have a profound effect on the planning for Operation Greenhouse. A hydrogen bomb, a fusion bomb, a thermonuclear weapon, call it what you will, the moment for decision arrives. The world situation offers no other choice but to push the development of this type atomic weapon. After the events of 1949, President Truman ordered the development of the super bomb, now called hydrogen bomb. The task fell on the enthusiastic teller. During the course of his work valuable contributions also came from a mathematician, Stanislav Ulam. Up until this day there is a controversy of who deserves the credit for the major breakthroughs in the hydrogen bomb design in 1951, which include the concept of separating the fusion stage from the primary fission stage. Nonetheless, they managed to solve several problems in the possibility of development of a hydrogen bomb. The resulting important principles were tested in Inuitak Atoll during Operation Greenhouse. Two shots proved that heavy isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium and tritium, can boost the yields of nuclear weapons. You have a grandstand seat here to one of the most momentous events in the history of science. In less than a minute, you will see the most powerful explosion ever witnessed by human eyes. The blast will come out of the horizon just about there. And this is the significance of the moment. This is the first full-scale test of a hydrogen device. If the reaction goes, we're in the thermonuclear era. For the sake of all of us, and for the sake of our country, I know that you join me in wishing this expedition well. It is now 30 seconds to zero time. Put on goggles or turn away. 
What has happened back on the Atoll? Around the same time, the Soviet scientists began their work on the hydrogen bomb. Their main spy inside the Manhattan Project, Klaus Fuchs, managed to send the first works on the hydrogen bomb problem before he left the United States. However, since the real breakthroughs only occurred after 1949, the Soviet scientists mostly did the resulting breakthroughs by themselves. The main scientist responsible for the breakthroughs is Andrei Sakharov, often called the father of the hydrogen bomb in Russia. The breakthroughs have been remarkably similar to that of the Americans. They first tested boosting by use of alternation of fusion and fission materials in the assembly. Unlike the Americans, however, they already opted to test dry fusion fuel, lithium deuteride, instead of liquid hydrogen. On August 12, 1953, they tested it again in the test side near Semipalatinsk, Kazakhstan.
1954, Bikini Atoll became the site again of a series of nuclear tests in an operation code named Castle. The breakthrough in using dry fusion fuel instead of liquid hydrogen was tested. The most notable of the tests was the first shot, codenamed Bravo, conducted on March 1, 1954. The yield is initially estimated to be around 6,000 kilotons, or 6 megatons. the servicemen saw their bones through their flesh. They felt like they were being bloaterged even from the allegedly safe distance from ground zero. They underestimated the contribution of lithium to the resulting yield of the nuclear test. The resulting yield is 15 megatons. To make matters worse, the wind pattern, originally thought to be westward, turned eastward, thus blanketing both native Marshallese islanders and U.S. servicemen outside the declared danger zone with radioactive fallout. Castle Bravo turned into the worst nuclear disaster in the U.S. history. The misfortune did not end there. A Japanese fishing vessel was also blanketed by the fallout from the nuclear test, turning the worst nuclear disaster in the U.S. history to also a diplomatic crisis with Japan. One of the crew eventually died from complications. The story of Japanese fishermen dying due to an attack from a radioactive monster was later appropriated to the plot of a movie released later that year in Japan. The movie was titled Godzilla. On November 22, 1955, a hydrogen bomb D sign was finally tested in Kazakhstan. A bomber flew to ground zero and dropped a nuclear bomb, demonstrating not only mastery of the hydrogen bomb D sign, but also the capability of deploying them to targets in America. The Operation Red Wing saw 17 nuclear tests of various innovations in thermonuclear weapons design. Both Bikini and Inuitak Atoll were used for the tests. There are also imposed constraints in the maximum yields and yield percentages. This is to prevent the problems of massive fallout that occurred during Operation Castle. Much effort is also done to ensure that the total fallout is within imposed limits, often by reducing the percentage of the yield due to the fission stage of the weapon. The United States finally demonstrated their capability to deliver hydrogen bombs to targets using long-range bombers. On May 21, 1956, a long-range bomber dropped a hydrogen bomb during the test code named Cherokee. The yield was 3.8 megatons.
the capability of the hydrogen bomb to produce yields surpassing millions of tons of TNT, was demonstrated on 1961, when the Soviet Union decided to demonstrate their nuclear capability by detonating a scaled-down version of 100 megaton bomb. A three-stage thermonuclear design was employed. A modified long-range bomber was used to carry the oversized bomb to the ground zero in desolate Novaya Zemlya Island in northern Soviet Union. A massive parachute is used to slow the descent of the bomb, allowing the bomber to flee safely from the blast. The flash of the light is visible a thousand kilometers from the ground zero even with cloudy skies. Houses hundreds of kilometers from the test site sustained damages. Radio communications were interrupted for almost an hour. The actual yield was 57 megatons, 